We start off with different hull types. Uh, most vessels, they have a displacement hull. This means uh, that the hull of the vessel displaces an equal weight of water as the weight of the ship, also when it's moving through the water. So they're lying down in the water. Uh, vessels with a displacement hull have a limit as to their maximum speed, regardless of how uh, big engine you put into them. Uh, most fishing vessels are, uh, have displacement hulls. Next you have um, semi-planing hulls, uh, which is vessels with relatively large engines and a moderate weight. Uh, and the shape of the hull on these vessels make that they partly lift themselves out of the water uh, when the speed increases. Uh, they uh, use a lot of fuel, uh, they make a lot of noise and they make great waves. Uh, but there are some advantages to them as well. They, they are faster than displacement hulls. Finally, you have planing hulls, um, which is vessels that have big engines in comparison to the, their weight. Uh, and the hull shape is such that they are lifted out of the water. And uh, when they're moving through the water, only a, a very small part of the hull is actually submerged. Uh, we the hull needs to meet uh, several different requirements. First of all, it has to have uh, enough buoyancy uh, to uh, to take care of whatever cargo or whatever weight we put inside the hull. Uh, it has to be strong enough to withstand the static uh, forces due to the weight of the ship and the dynamic forces uh, from the movement in the waves and sea and weather. It also needs to have a shape that makes it possible to drive the hull through the water with uh, as little force as possible. And it needs to act as a good uh, working platform for the people and, and the cargo uh, that is on board. In addition, it also needs to fulfill any special needs uh, connected to the uh, fishing gear, uh, the cargo that it carries or whatever tasks uh, the hull is supposed to, or the vessel is supposed to do. We look at a few definitions and terms that are used when we are describing vessels. We start off with LOA, length overall, which is the total length of a vessel. KVL, construction waterline, that is the length of the waterline for a fully loaded vessel. That's the construction waterline. AP, the aft perpendicular, uh, which is a vertical line through the center of the rudder shaft. The four perpendicular is a vertical line through the foremost, foremost point of the construction waterline. And LPP, the length between the perpendiculars, uh, is the length, this is the distance between the aft perpendicular and the forward perpendicular. And it's also a, a much used um, measurement when you're describing the length of ships. Moving on, we have the center frame, um, which is a vertical line in the middle between the aft perpendicular and the forward per perpendicular. T is an abbreviation for draft, which is uh, the distance from the waterline to the bottom of the keel. F, freeboard, distance from the waterline to the deck line. And the deck line is a uh, a line that should be clearly marked on the hull side. Um, molded draft is the distance from the deck line all the way down to the keel midships. Uh, and as we see, molded draft equals draft plus freeboard. So the sum of the ship's draft and the ship's freeboard will always equal the molded draft. Next, we have B, beam width, normally uh, the hull's greatest width, measured in meters. Bundres uh, is a term that um, measures whether the ship has a flat um, or a V-shaped bottom. See the figure. Uh, if it has a lot of bundres, uh, it means that it has a higher draft. Also means better stability and less drift when you have wind from the side. Most bigger vessels, they have, a, they have a flat bottom. Slag radius is the radius um, between the bottom and the ship side measured at midships, uh, in the middle between the aft and the forward perpendicular. 
Bjelkebukt um, is the curving of the deck seen uh, as in the figure here. Styrlost is a different term. Uh, it is the angle that the vessel, uh, the keel, uh, has with the basis line and as such with the vessel's water line. Uh, it means that the vessel is designed with a bigger draft aft compared to forward, as we see here. Um, it's common on smaller vessels and very common on fishing vessels. Uh, one of the purposes of styrlost is to get the aft part of the ship and therefore the propeller as deep into the sea as possible. Uh, this also means that you get the, the bow of the ship more up and it makes the ship easier to turn. Tonnage uh, are measurements of the vessels that say something about the size of the ship. Uh, displacement, that's the weight of the vessel with everything on board. The unit is metric tons of a thousand kilos. Dead weight, that is uh, the amount of weight that the ship can carry. Cargo, fuel, crew, stores, provisions, etc. etc. Also unit is tons. Whereas the light ship, that is the weight of the empty ship. Unit is tons. So the displacement equals the light ship plus dead weight and unit is tons for all of them. And payload, that's the maximum uh, weight of the cargo that the ship can carry. Unit is tons. Uh, some calculations with regards to tonnages. Displacement equals light ship plus dead weight, which means that light ship equals displacement minus the dead weight. And the dead weight equals displacement minus the light ship. So if we have a light ship weight of 250 tons and a dead weight of 160 ton, what is then the displacement? Well, it's one plus the other, so in this case 410 tons. If we have a light ship of 84 tons, a dead weight of 71 tons, what is then the displacement? Same there, and we end up with 155 tons. Uh, we have read the draft marks and we found a displacement of 440 tons. The light ship weight is 320 tons. Uh, what will then the, the actual dead weight for this condition be? Well, it's displace displacement minus light ship. In this case, we get a, a dead weight of 120 tons. Gross tonnage uh, is a volume measurement of the, uh, of the vessel and one gross ton equals 100 English cubic feet, which is uh, about 2.83 cubic meters. So if you thought the metric system was uh, ruling uh, in the maritime business, well, I'm sorry to disappoint you. You still have some imperial measurements like uh, gross tons. Um, and the gross tonnage is, in principle, it's the, the, the volume of the entire uh, vessel, including uh, cargo holds, superstructures, engine rooms, etc. Uh, gross tonnage is important for a number of reasons. Um, a lot of different harbor fees are calculated based on the gross tonnage of a vessel. Um, certificate limits for deck crew uh, often um, relate to gross tonnage. For engineers, it's often for the, the uh, main effect of the propulsion machinery. Uh, and there's also a lot of technical requirements or regulations for ships that vary according to the vessel's gross tonnage. And the D5 uh, certificate, for instance, uh, by the Norwegian regulations and also the STCW, uh, is for near coastal voyages on vessels up to 499 gross tons. Net tonnage uh, is used uh, a lot less, but it's also a volume measurement. Uh, a bit simplified, it's the volume of the cargo holds of the vessel. Draft marks uh, are markings on the ship side that uh, um, indicate how much you can load the vessel at different times. And which one of the different draft marks that's valid depends on where and when the voyage is to commence. Uh, draft and freeboard uh, are of course uh, connected. The more draft you have, the less means the less freeboard you have. And the more freeboard you have, the more extra buoyancy you have and the bigger sa the safety margin is. So if you load the vessel down like that, you come onto a, a different draft marks 
and you have a smaller safety margin. The load line convention is the international regulations that decide how much freeboard vessels should have. Uh, we don't go into the details of how this is calculated, but we are, as navigators, we have to um, relate to the load line regulations for the vessels that we are on and make sure that we don't uh, uh, load the vessel more than the uh, draft mark for our condition.